Catalina was a high school girl, trying to survive everything life put her through. She strived to get to college and have a successful career. Her parents had educated her to become a dentist as it was also their profession and they wanted her to continue the family legacy. Catalina was also convinced that she was destined to be a dentist. She always thought that after graduating and starting to work with her parents, she would find a good, decent man with whom she was going to share the rest of her life, and most importantly, one who would agree with her conviction of not having children. Even though she liked children and they usually got along well with her, Catalina was convinced that they were not her thing. She did not want to lose her freedom and be tied to a little creature she'd have to attend to and care for for at least 18 years. Furthermore, she did not want to bring children into a world that is increasingly difficult to survive. When Catalina got to the university, she also realized that sometimes having everything can actually be counterproductive. Catalina had to live on her own for the first time, and even though she could afford to have her own apartment in the city, she still had no one to cook or clean her house and she now had to do her own laundry. For a while, Catalina paid someone to do it all, but then she realized that she was spending too much money. She also had her shopping trips and days out with her friends, and she had to cut loose one of them. The obvious choice was cutting back on the fees she was paying for household care. Catalina had to learn not just to cook, but also how to do housekeeping and how to turn on a washing machine and full clothes. She also now had to not only pay her own bills but to make sure none of them was due. For the first time, she hated being an adult. She realized that being offered everything on a silver plate wasn't always good. Had her parents let her deal with the world earlier, she wouldn't be so shocked and stuck as a college girl. Catalina also realized that if it was so hard for her to take care of herself, it would be twice as hard to take care of someone else, let alone an infant that needed attention 24-7, which only reinforced her desire of not having children. Catalina was now more than ever determined to have no children, she decided to avoid pregnancy at all costs and even underwent surgery to tie her fallopian tubes. She was now about to graduate as a dentist, and she had already started working with her parents in their clinic. By that time she'd been with her boyfriend for a year, Catalina's parents adored him because he was very friendly and fun, came from a good family, and had expressed his intention to marry Catalina since the day he first met her. He had his apartment in a brand new family business that would make their daughter even more comfortable than they did, and that made them happy and relieved about how Catalina's life turned out. What's more, the boy seemed to be madly in love with Catalina. However, Catalina, who had decided on not having children since her young age, hadn't taken the time to talk sincerely with her boyfriend about the subject. He knew that his girlfriend did not want to have children and neither did he, but he had never delved into the matter because he agreed with her not to have children at that time, while they were unmarried and still studying, but he left the door open for the future. He did not know that Catalina was talking about never having children until the night he proposed to her. Just minutes after she had accepted his proposal, the subject suddenly came up and he told her that it would be great if they could have a child when they were aged between 30 and 35 years old. Catalina gave him the shock of his life when she said that she did not want children at all, be it over 35 or before. Her declaration broke his heart in a way that no one had imagined. Blinded by anger, he took her by force without any precaution, hoping she would get pregnant right there at the spot. Catalina's body was battered and so was her heart. Catalina ran to her parents' house the minute she could run away from him. Even though she didn't tell them anything, they just assumed that she had an argument with her boyfriend. Not thinking it was anything serious, they didn't fight him away when he came the next day to talk to her. To Catalina's surprise, he spoke to her as if nothing had happened and asked her if they were going to tell her parents together that they were getting married, or if she would prefer to wait a while to announce their engagement formally with a proper celebration. Catalina could not believe her ears. She told him that after what he had done the night before, there was no way she'd even stay together, let alone get married and threw him out of the house with tears and screams. When he left, she told her parents everything, and as always, they gave her their full love and support and told her that she could stay with them as long as she wanted. Catalina took an emergency pill to avoid pregnancy. 
After laying down, she was finally able to calm down, believing that everything would turn out just right, that she would resume her profession and continue with her life. But nothing went as she planned. In spite of everything she had done to avoid it, Catalina was pregnant with twins. The news fell on her like a bomb, and Catalina got a severe depression for several months. Her parents stayed by her side all the time, and so did her friends. Everyone tried to comfort her down and help her go through her misery, but it was not until she was a month away from giving birth that Catalina was finally able to accept her reality and reconcile herself with the idea of becoming a mother. Catalina was only able to find peace with her reality after her ultrasound session. She saw her children holding hands in the womb. Her unborn babies loved each other so much, even before they could see one another, and Catalina understood that she would also love them with all the strength of her heart. She knew it was not going to be easy, but she had faith that the hardest part was over and that only better things were laying ahead. Unfortunately, Catalina was wrong again. She was going to feel the most intense pain any mother can go through, the pain of losing a child. The day she was waiting for finally came, and her delivery went smoothly, but only a few minutes later the doctor told her that she should prepare herself as one of the twins might not survive. He was smaller than normal and born with a very weak heart, his heartbeat was only getting slower, the other baby was born healthy with normal weight. When she received the news, Catalina felt like she was going crazy. She couldn't even hold the weaker baby because he had been taken directly to an incubator. And as she held her other son, she saw it in the expression on his face that he was also suffering from being separated from his little brother, the one he held hands with in their mother's womb for long. Catalina asked a nurse to take the healthy baby to the incubator and put him next to her other son. The nurse agreed, even though such measures were not usually allowed, and it was only a matter of minutes before her eyes teared from the tender scene she had the chance to witness. The healthy baby found a way to embrace his little brother as if he wanted to give him some of his strength, and it worked as the miracle that no one could possibly believe happened. It only took a few minutes of cuddling for the baby's heart to start beating normally, and a couple more weeks in medical care were enough for Catalina to leave the hospital with her two babies happy and healthy. Love does indeed make miracles happen, one we don't get to see every day.